Sup guys, my name is Ryan and Dragnell, and welcome back to Seduce Me in the Hotel. Right? Now, we finished Damien's route, and the next person I decided to do was Cinnamon Bun Matthew. Woohoo! So, um, I skipped the whole beginning and such, so if you just decided not to, if you just decided to watch Matthew just for the heck of it, and we want to know the beginning, go back to my first video, which was I was doing Damien's route. And I'm going to be skipping for the scenes that we've seen for most of the part. So if you want to know everything, like um, most of the stuff that we've already reviewed, like their past and stuff, I probably won't skip that much of the past and whatnot. But there will be some stuff I'll skip. So if you want to know everything, just go watch Damien's route if you would like and come back. But if you don't and you just want to watch just for the route, just for the heck of it, then that's fine with me. So, um, without further ado, let's begin. Well, might as well make myself at home. I'll be staying here for quite a while anyways. That's when I saw her. Whoa. Sorry. Lying on the floor was a group of men. They were all unconscious, but there was no explanation as to why they were there in the first place. I dropped my bags as I let the door close on its own behind me. Huh? Who the heck are these guys? Why are they here? What's going on? Some of them had open wounds. The blood was staining the floor and the scent was intermingling with the air. I couldn't help but feel bad for them instinctively, but nevertheless I was shocked and a bit angry at the sudden intrusion. My mind suddenly went from caring and concerned to confused and demanding answers. Who are you guys? No response. I'll call the police. Still nothing. None of them seemed to be awake to answer or respond to me. It seemed surreal to have random strangers in the house I just moved into, but I wanted answers quickly. That was until... Eep, get away from me! Woman, you're going to let me kiss you. Fuck off, Sam. Oh, wait, I totally forgot to mention. Um, I heard that Sam's, that Sam's route was the actual canon ending for this game, like for me... Like, for me, the player, ourselves, like, he's the actual ending. So, because of that, I will be doing Sam's route last. Okay, moving on. I couldn't believe myself, but within a mere blink of an eye, one of the men went from lying on the floor to being right in front of my face. What was even more odd was the fact I felt serene and calm without it. Please don't mind my fast reading. I just want to get past some stuff. And there will be times where I skip. So, yeah. Slowly a desire burned from my chest, telling me to accept his kiss, even when I vehemently refused. Uh-huh, go ahead. Good. Ah, the kiss, the kiss made her go weak, blah, blah, blah. Energy ran up. The same, it felt odd, but it felt amazing. Sam, stop it. And James, the cock blocker. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Mm? I said stop. Now. Mm. Fine. And uh, there we go, James and Sam. And we're just gonna like move on. Exploded. What are you? Go what is going on? What are you doing in the here in my house? Who the fuck are you guys? Why did you kiss me? <laughs> it couldn't help but exploding after being taken advantage of and being left in a mush state. My words escaped without filter. I definitely scared the men around me, even the man who kissed me. Wait a second. The guy who kissed me. Ouch! What's your problem? What's your problem? You can't go around forcing people to kiss you like that. Are you some kind of pervert? Pervert? It was only a kiss! It might mean nothing to you, but it means a lot to me. What? Was it your first kiss? Maybe. Yes. Okay. Ow! Hey! What was that for? I know first kisses are amazing and sparkles and unicorns and rainbows and shit. But I at least expect it to be more than something forced. So it was your first kiss. Stop making such a big deal out of it. Are you asking to get punched again? Well, what do you want me to do? It's not like I can somehow take it back. Hitting you. How? You're just being violent now. You deserved it. Anyway, if you try to pull any funny business in the future, it's just a fair warning. I know Taekwondo. And we're going to skip because they just introduced that they're Incubi and Eric seduced us. Okay, okay. Yeah, Eric just seduced us and then we fainted and then we end up here. You're awake. 
Gash is Damien! Huh? Gah! Since when we standing there? Who the heck was he? A guy in my room? Did we? There's no way! Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I think I was saying my thoughts aloud. Why was I apologizing to a stranger who only said two words? Yeah, two words since I woke up. Wait, he looked eerily familiar. And it all came back to me. Incubus, he was an incubus. He and his brothers came for refuge. Two of them kissed me and then I faded. And that was how things came to this. Oh. <sighs> he was leaning against the far wall looking at me. My heart began my heart began to race as I thought of the endless pos list of possibilities this situation brought me. I hated the thought of being an under an incubus's power, especially in the bedroom. I am so sorry, Damien. I have to for the sake of Matthew. Ah jump up and protect yourself. I instantly jumped up and grabbed the pillow, covering myself with it. I felt stupid, yes, but who knew what this guy could do? Do your worst! This time, I'm prepared! <laughs> yeah, move. I guess he wasn't going to attack me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going to use my powers on you. That's good for you. I'm so sorry if I'm just skipping everything. If that annoys you, just I ha I've just gone through this a lot of times, and you know... Yeah, if you, I, like I said before, if you want to see everything, go watch Damien's run and then come back here. And Skip, he's going to carry us downstairs. Oh, hi! And then Matthew, I'm not skipping the Matthew parts, let's just put it that way. Since we're doing Matthew's route. Suddenly, a boy who looked around my age, or possibly younger, bounced up to me. He looked vaguely familiar. Oh, wait. Ah, you're Matthew, right? Mm-hmm, that's me. Are you feeling any better now? We were all worried when you suddenly passed out. I'm fine. Really? Your face is kind of red. Do you feel sick? No, I'm fine. I'm sure of it. Still innocent. I must have been blushing when Damien was carrying me downstairs. How embarrassing. Well, if you say so. I hope Sam and Eric didn't make you upset. It's okay. After all, I did hit Sam after what he did. And about Eric, I just want you guys to prove to me what you were saying. I suppose Incubi are... real then. I wondered how exactly I got myself into this mess. First my grandfather, then a fight with my father, blowing up at Lisette. And now this? I certainly had a knack for getting myself into sick, sticky situations. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. He shoved his hands into his pockets with a cheery grin on his face. Wait for it. Wait for it. Is he trying to do a magic trick? Ta-da! Um, what is that exactly? He smiled as to wave it off, but when he opened his eyes and saw what he was holding, his face froze in shock. Wait a second. What did I just make? This... this is... What he produced from his pocket was a creepy-looking doll. It looks like a goddamn squirrel, though. With a knife, and it's dangerous. Ah, oh, what is that? I I'm not sure. His face paled considerably and he dropped it onto the floor, scooting away from it frantically. Get it away from me! It might be possessed by a demon or something! But aren't you a demon too? But isn't he a demon himself? That's not what I wanted to make! I just wanted to surprise you with a stuffed animal or just something to cheer you up. That looks like it came straight out of a horror movie. He slumped his shoulders and looked down at his feet. Aw, oh, it's okay. You don't have to look so dejected. I mean, it's certainly unique. I think I'll keep it. But it looks so creepy. It's the thought that counts, right? You wanted to cheer me up after all. I picked up the doll and looked at it closely. Sure, it looked pretty weird at first, but it could be cute if I looked at, him from a looked at it from a certain angle. I gave him a small smile. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good to see you smiling, even though the thing I made still kind of creeps me out. Eh, don't worry about it. Anyway, you should come with me to the dining room. We're almost finished with the food, and, well, I don't mean to brag, but we're pretty decent chefs. Sounds great. Lead the way. Something smells good. And then stuff happens, and yeah, James asked if we want to talk about our life. Whoops. James asked what it moved in and stuff, but we're not going to tell him for the sake of Matthew. Soon, though. I'm going to tell you soon. It's fine. Maybe another time. Very well. Here's your seat, then. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. Skipping to the part where we gotta smack the shit out of him. I'm sorry, Eric. I still love you, okay? Ugh. That's going to sting. 
sorry, I panicked. No, I was expecting that. Oh, really? No. Drew my attention to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all of the dishes with a dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression as if he was betrayed. His face changed instantly to that of a frown. And I'm the Queen of the Nile. What's that supposed to mean? Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. <laughs> Little boys will always make mistakes. Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably sighing for Eric, and he annoyed sw well, uh, Wow. And he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act like it. <laughs> I really couldn't help but laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel like, in a way, he was much more mature than the others. Especially Eric. You're damn right he's more mature. and We're going to find out more about him. Huh? Is something funny? <laughs> no, no, nothing. It's nothing at all. Thank you for the meal, all of you. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome, miss. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Eric, knock it off. In agreement with Matthew, Sam cocked his head up and glared at Eric. Seriously, you're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. He had this big, tough act and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. But was there more to him than that? Yes, there is. I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're going to need some cold water for that burn. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I don't believe we caught your name, even though you know each of us. Ah, I'm Rena. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. They were all comfortable around me, despite the awkward situation we were in. It was as if it were natural for them to be around humans. I guess that was just how Incubi worked. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. All, all at once, they looked at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them look at me made me feel kind of important. Like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah. Like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appearing in your house is perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? Now you're just being rude, Sam. I'm just saying... How was that difficult to understand? No, I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently, we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So you're all better now? Yup, all thanks to you. Huh? Me. You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power. It was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. These incubi intrigued me, but at the same time, I could almost, almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we going to do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here, and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take them easily. Yeah, that worked out last time. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there if they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes. They probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They probably would cause chaos all over town. Or on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be po 
and prodded like lab frogs for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of back then. And flashback, I'm gonna skip. Okay. And then, and now... Don't, Don't worry, worry too much about it. it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. Thanks, Grandpa. So I guess we decided. Well, um, you could... What was that, lovely lady? That is, uh... Spit it out already. You could stay here with me. Wow. You could stay with me here if you'd like. As soon as I finished this, my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads from my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all needed a place to stay, and well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed like it made sense. It was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, save for enemies, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so, yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. What? Are you serious? Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> they all seem to like the idea, except for Sam. And hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help me with taking care of the house, given they would follow the rules that I had just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Excuse me. Yes! This is awesome! Also beautiful, if you need a bedfellow... Again, Eric. Soon. In your, in your route. Don't worry. It'll happen. Um... Eric, knock it off. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed help and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves in the, with the food on the table. I noticed James's eye twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. So I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't hold in my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? What are you laughing at? I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. You both are so funny. Both of their faces turned a slight pink before they looked away from me, and they swallowed their f the food in their mouths. Shut up! We're not funny. We're hungry. Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Shut up, Matthew! What? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. <laughs> oh, James. They were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple of pieces of food for myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. Sam's smile looked so forced. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, eventually we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with the, just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like part of their family as we ate together. However, her peace was soon disturbed. Then mom calls, and now we have to organize a party because of dad. That's nice. And Damien knows because of mind reading. <laughs> yeah, I gotta do it sooner. My parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up organize everything tonight. Uh... Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. You don't have to, you know. Sam? 
back off. Uh, we'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. Couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then he hit me. Wait, where are you all going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Oh, got it. All right. I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. I will. You too. With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, he was. Shh. So then we just... <laughs> You fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! Wow, I shouldn't have said- Okay, that was a rude interruption, Malik's okay. So we just studied and went to sleep, and now we're having this crazed up dream with Malik's in it. Huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up, and I couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it! Let her go! Matthew? Come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man! <laughs> like you scare me, Sam! Come on! Take one step, I dare ya. Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix! And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Suddenly I felt myself being pulled to one side, and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. Huh? Eric? As I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had faded into the black as arms around me rocked me comfortingly. Slowly, though, my eyes fluttered open and I looked at the person holding me. D damien Okay. I'm gonna skip a lot from here, so I'll explain after I finish skipping. Blah. Uh, yeah. They, I'm gonna say, they're, ba basically, we got cuffed by Damien, then we go to eat breakfast, then our friends called and said they were at the door, and then Matthew opened the door, god damn it, Matthew, now we gotta make up an excuse, um, I'm gonna say they're in your head. Susa reached out and poked Matthew on the forehead, making him stare cross-eyed at her finger. Uh, hello to you too? Seems real to me. They're not imaginary. <laughs> that was the worst answer, but I had to. Um, I'm going to skip. Basically, James is going to tell them that they're servants and whatnot, and then they're going to invite me out. Blah, blah, blah. So, now we have to decide. Go out with them or help around the house. Help around the house. Are you sure? I'm sure. Besides, it's my housewarming party. I should help out, too. Want us to help out as well? I think we got it all taken care of. Thanks, though, girls. All right. We'll head on out then so we're not in the way. Sorry, guys. I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I led them back into the lobby and walked them through the doors, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking out of Naomi's car to Naomi's bar, which, park, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was tonight, and we all we had to do all we could to make everything right. We sat down and talked about how about what needed to happen before the party started that night. Each guy had been assigned a different part of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one incubus, James told me I could assist one of them. The question was, who? Matthew with the cooking, even though I cannot cook for my life. Oh my god. I walked into the kitchen and instantly looked over at Matthew, who was quickly slicing up strawberries and placing them into a nearby bowl. I walked over and looked over his shoulder to watch. Matthew seem didn't seem to mind, so I decided to ask him a question. What are you making? I'm going to make a large batch of strawberry cupcakes. These strawberries are going to be the top pieces. 
Ooh, that sounds delicious. Can I help? Yeah, I kind of hoped you would. <laughs> Can you start by making the batter for the cupcakes? I put the ingredients and some directions on the counter over there. I nodded before heading over to another counter, where a string of ingredients and a small note card of directions sat at the ready. I smiled and began to work, mixing the ingredients and pouring the batter into cupcake tins to bake. I had to admit, I made a little bit of a mess, but I felt like the cupcakes were still fine. There we go. Now we just need to wait. As I turned to face Matthew, I noticed Matthew's red face. I tilted my head before he walked over and moved his hand a bit towards my face. He stopped, however, looking to me for permission. Nod to him. Matthew continued to move his hand towards me, gently brushing a finger over my cheek. My senses tripled, feeling his finger wipe over a small stain of powder and cream that had landed on my face. You, uh, got a stain. Matthew's finger was ginger and timid, wiping the stain off with as little contact as possible. Lightning shot, Lightning shot through my body at each wipe, running down my spine in jolts. I closed my eyes, unconsciously leading to his touch and naturally wanting more. However, Matthew pulled his hand away, causing me to open my eyes and look at him. Matthew was biting his lower lip and had pulled his hand to his chest. Sorry, um, I got it all? <laughs> Jesus, what are we doing? Oh, thank you. Matthew quickly shook his head and grinned his goofy grin. Look at the, look at his smile, it's so cute. His goofy grin at me before continuing to make another appetizer for the party. I blinked a couple of times, wondering if I, what I saw was real. The hour of the house party had arrived. In my mind, I kept d double and triple checking the essentials for the party. Knowing my dad, he invited his business partners and the executives of the Anderson Company to show off. To show me off. I stood in front of my mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time, it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectations. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. It was my test to see if I was really, really ready to live on my own. I would skip this, but there's the questions coming up, so I'm just going to do all of it. Well, not truly alone. I had the incubi to thank, but even so, I didn't have my dad guiding me or my mom helping me through living alone. A knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprisingly. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. Alright. As soon as I opened the door to the hall, I watched as Naomi's and Suzu's faces turned from smiles to complete awestruck stares. W what? Dude, you look hot! Yeah, you look amazing! Where did you get that dress? I've had it for a while. I just never had the chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. I stepped out of my room and closed my bedroom door behind me. As I walked down the hall to the grand lobby, the incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed to the nines as proper servants. I'm gonna stop here for this episode, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And... If you want, subscribe to me for more videos that I'm going to make. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next part for Matthew's route. Bye!